Now, if you're rotating around the Y axis instead of the X axis, just make a few changes. Your bounds are going to be vertical now. There'll be Y equals A and B. And you might need to rearrange your function to get X as the subject because a lot of the time we'll be given the function as Y equals something. So you'll need to rearrange it and then also square it to get X squared because instead of using this formula where we have Y squared DX, you need to use X squared DY. And now for an example, we need to rotate this area around the Y axis. So start with your formula. You need bounds of two and five. And then instead of pi y squared dx, we need pi x squared dy. Now, to get x squared, we've got a little bit of work to do because our formula is not uh, arranged correctly. So write down your equation and then rearrange it. Let's subtract 2 from both sides. Then let's take the cubed root of both sides. But instead of writing y minus 2 as the cubed root, let's write to the power of a third because I'm keeping in mind what I'm going to do with it in a minute and I don't want thirds. And then to square both sides here, I can see that x squared will be y minus 2 to the power of 2 thirds because if I'm raising a power to another power, I multiply the powers. So now I can go ahead and sub that in over here. At this point, I might bring my pi out the front and we've got y minus 2 to the 2 thirds dy. Okay, so to integrate this, it is a so-called perfect question because I've got a, a function raised to a power and what's out the front is the derivative of that actual function. So I can go ahead and say that I need to raise the power by one. So adding three thirds to th two thirds, I get five thirds and then divide by the new power, which is multiplying by three fifths. Now, if I like, I can write that three fifths in there or to keep it out of the way, I can actually write it out here. So out here I think is probably a little bit tidier in this case. And then I've got my bounds here and here. On the next line I've got 3 pi on 5. Oh, by the way, always check that when you differentiate this you actually get back to that. So the 5 thirds would come down and they'd cancel with the 3 fifths. This power would drop down by 1 and I'd rewrite everything here so that'd be fine and I'd bring out the derivative of what's in the brackets which is just one so we're good. Now subbing in when y equals 5 we have 3 to, to the 5 thirds and minus well we're going to get nothing there and now to tidy up I can see that I've got 3 to the power of 1 multiplied by 3 to the power of 5 thirds so that gives me 3 to the power of 8 thirds pi over 5 cubic units. So you could leave it like that. You could do 3 to the power of 8, put that in a cubed root bracket, over 5, multiplied by pi cubic units. Or if the question had asked you to round it, say, to two decimal places, then you can have something like 11.76 as an approximation. And always check, I think it's not a bad idea to find the approximation uh, anyway, just so you can check that it's a number that sort of makes sense. If I've got numbers here like 2 and 5, then I can sort of picture roughly how many cubic units there might be. And if I come up with some answer like 500 cubic units, then clearly I'm going to be able to see 